Okay, so this is a gopher hole, and I'm going to try to show um, how I place the traps and how I trap gophers. Um, and I'll start off by showing the items, and then I'll put it in there, and hopefully later I'll be able to show a video of the gopher. These are the tools I use. Um, that's a gophernator trap, a bit of wire, this is just copper wire, and it's tied to a piece of aluminum scrap. It doesn't have to be this, um, it's whatever you have in hand. The purpose of this piece here is twofold. One, it's handy to scrape things and dig things out, that's why I made that little hook there. And secondly, once you've placed the trap, you can bury this in the soil so that if a cat tries to grab your gophernator or the gopher tries to run backwards, it won't drag the whole thing inside. And then to take it out, you just kind of yank this cable and pull the wire out gently, and the whole thing will come out. This is a this is a hoary knife. Uh, I also got a trap line, the same company that makes the gophernator, and it's just a useful digging tool, knife, kind of. It's, that's all it is. And this is a stick. <laughs> this is um, is used to probe for where the tunnel is. And I actually have a, um, a steel tool, like a four-foot tool that, that also serves well for some more difficult holes. But here, the soil is relatively soft and, and it rained recently, so this stick should be able to do the job. And if that doesn't work, then I've got a bamboo stick here. And um, if that doesn't work, I'll go and get the actual, uh, the actual probe stick, probe tool. Okay, as you can see, there, sure enough, there's a tunnel right there. And it's pretty deep. Let's see if I can... There you go. So, I'm going to excavate that a little bit. Enlarge the hole a little bit. Alright, so... What I did is I just, you know, took my little impromptu tool and dug, 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 and, and then just stick your hand down there as far as you can go. And I just kind of show you how far this goes. Ugh. All right. So that's my arm pretty far down there. And uh question's always, well, how far do you have to go? Well, you want that gopher to feel nice and safe as he's walking down that tunnel towards that light. Because what he wants to do is he wants to fill that uh, tunnel up. He wants to fill that hole up and you want him to feel nice and safe all the way until he hits that trap. So it's got to go down pretty far inside the tunnel. Okay. I'll set the trap right now. Okay. Trap is set. Let's stick it down there. All right. Come on, baby. Let's go. Oh, hold on. There is the tunnel. And I've put this this kind of tray um, over it and put some weights on top of it. The purpose of this is just to uh, not allow light, to allow very little light to enter the tunnel. That way the gopher doesn't sense there's this huge gap there and start backfilling the tunnel way back. Um, I want him to investigate, come down that tunnel, and then start filling the tunnel right where the trap is. And so ideally his, his face would bump the trap bar, it triggers, and then the jaws pinch close, and that will be it for the gopher. So if I'm successful, um, I might be even able to catch one within the next two hours. Right now it's about probably three o'clock and gophers are kind of crespian creatures, meaning that they eat most during the morning and in the um, evenings, uh, late afternoon. So they should be active right about now. We'll find out. Well, so this is the next morning, and we struck out. And the reason for that is because, as I said yesterday, this trap needs to be as deep in the tunnel as possible. And I got as deep as I could, 
but not quite deep enough. So what I need to do is I need to dig it back out. You can see that the gopher has buried the trap completely. You know, I have to dig it back out and then I need to excavate that 90 degree angle in there um, down that side a little bit more so I can get that trap all the way inside on that end. And that will probably mean that I need to widen this hole to get my hand in there and, um, and do that. Alternatively, I can also excavate this whole section out and then slide in there and then like take a piece of like wood or something like that to create a false tunnel, like a fake tunnel on top. It depends. Like what ideally you want is like a, a long straight um, run heading to the tunnel mouth. You know what? I take that back. I may have spoken too soon because look what happened. You see that? So it did manage to start burying the trap in, but in the process, it tripped the bar. So let's pull this out and see what we got. You're going to notice that I've got these uh, gloves on. Um, you don't really need them. I mean, it's not like you're going to get any diseases or anything like that. It's just that my skin is really dry and, you know, I, I tend to get cracks in my skin from washing my hands too much. So this is helpful for me. If you're interested, uh, these are called Diamond Flex gloves. They're not like your standard uh, latex gloves. They're a little bit thicker and uh, they're thick enough that can so they can handle all the rigors of getting in and out of places like this. All right, let's pull it out. <sighs> Well, look at there. All right, little guy. No more eating our beet greens and and uh, other vegetables for you. And because gophers are territorial, um, we probably won't get another one unless there's a, a mate. We'll have to get that one too for a while. Any other gopher going to the tunnels will smell the urine from this gopher and try to stay away unless they want to look for a fight. You can also see that as the trap went down, it tried to fight the trap. And there's his teeth on the uh, trigger bar right there. But no dice. Dead as a doornail. And I'm going to take this uh, gopher out, toss it up on an open part of the yard, and the hawks or the cats or coyotes or whatever will put him right back into the uh, food web. All right, that's how it's done. Okay. okay, so this is the last part of the video. And in the last one, I described how I was going to remove the body and toss it out. And, and I also mentioned that um, because they are territorial, you're typically only going to have maybe three gophers in a small yard. Um, usually only one or maybe two. And in this case here, uh, this gopher is relatively small. It's relatively young. And I would expect that there's probably at least one or maybe two more. So what I'm going to do here and what I already did is I reset the trap. And I just stuck it right back in the hole. We know it's an active. We know it's an active tunnel. Um, we know that it was a successful catch. We know the angle was was good enough. So went back in there, excavated it out, um, just to clean it out a little bit more. Uh, back to at least to where it was yesterday. And then I stuck the trap back in at the ninety degree angle. So it's down here, and then a little bit like this as far as I can get it without obstructing the jaws or the trigger bar and we'll see what uh, what get, that gets us in a few hours okay one final note notice that I'm using this tray here to kind of cover up the amount of light that goes into the tunnel as I mentioned earlier you want that that gopher to feel safe all the way up right until it hits that trigger bar 
And it's very important that as much as possible you um, remove light. So you see all these gaps here? These need to be filled up. And you, can, you don't need to do a super, super good job of it. Um, just need to kind of do what you can a little bit. You, know, you can use your hands. You don't have to use a tool. I'm just using it because my other hand is holding the phone right now. And try to avoid gaps of light. I just, I just want that tiny little sliver of light there. Maybe even further up. And I want that gopher to feel safe as he goes down through this tunnel. He's probably coming from over there because you can see it. Like another hole right there. You see that? So he's probably coming from over there, around there. And then he's going to hit the 90 degree angle. Go through the, through the jaws. And then right around there is when he'll want to start excavating and start digging uh, dirt up. And when he does that, he'll hunch his body up uh, to bring his, his deltoid muscles up so that he can push forward. And that's when he'll hit the trigger bar, jaws snap close, and it's done for him. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. hope that I uh, gave you some ideas on how to take care of your problem. And um, if you have any questions, uh, send them my way, and I'll see what I can do to give some helpful advice. Good luck and happy hunting.